Wer sind Sie? Ich war Pianist. Pianist. Hi guys, welcome to Filmy Vibes. Today I'm going to explain the movie The Pianist. Spoilers ahead and enjoy. The movie opens up in September 1939 in Warsaw, Poland, during the onset of World War II, with the introduction of Wladyslaw Spilman a pianist for the local radio station. The German army has beaten the Polish army in three weeks and the radio station in which Spilman is playing is suddenly bombarded, panicked all workers in the building start running out to save their lives. On his way out Spilman meets his buddy Jurek who introduces him to his sister Dorata. Dorata mentions that she likes Spilman's way of playing the piano and Spilman is also drawn to her right away. Later when Spilman arrives home, he discovers his parents brother and two sisters packing their belongings to leave Poland. As they're debating whether or not they can effectively depart Poland, they hear about the UK and France declaring war against Germany. With the news the family rejoices, assuming that once the Allies are able to engage Germany the war would come to an end. As a result they decide to stay, unfortunately the series of events doesn't go as the family presumed. In Warsaw the situation for Jews, soon starts deteriorating, German Nazis invade the place and impose harsh rules on them. The Jews are not allowed to keep more than 2,000 zelates, they're forbidden to walk on the footpaths they can't even sit in the restaurants to eat and lastly they're forced to wear a large symbol over their coat whenever they walk outside. Later Spielmann meets Dorata who follows him about Warsaw to learn about the injustices that Jews are subjected to under the new Nazi dictatorship. Businesses that used to be nice to them are suddenly refusing to accept their presence, two Nazi officers even stop Spielmann's father from walking on the municipal sidewalk and when he protests one of the officers punches him in the face, the situation gets even worse when the Jewish families are forced to relocate to a new district built by Nazis which is to be walled out from the rest of the city. Spillman's family which had been wealthy prior to the war is brought to subsistence status but they still remain better than many of their fellow Jews in the cramp-famished, disease-ridden ghetto. Spillman and his brother Henrik are compelled to sell books to earn some money for their family but sadly no one is interested in buying them, in the next scene a Jewish police officer and one of Henrik's friends Heller visits Spillman's new home and tells the brothers that they should join the Jewish army and save their family from facing problems, however Henry refuses his offer stating that he will not be able to beat his own people and behave rudely with them. Spillman also rejects his proposal mentioning that he's got his own work to do. Later Spillman can be seen playing the piano in a ghetto restaurant where the rich Jews gather. Meanwhile the living conditions in the ghetto continue to deteriorate, and numbers of Jews die every day from diseases starvation and random acts of violence by German soldiers, Spillman is not happy with his job and wants to do something for his community, after work he visits his old friend who distributes illegal newspapers with an aim to revolt against the Nazis, however his friend refuses to take him to his side claiming that musicians are bad at revolting and at speaking out for the crowd. Later on his way back home Spillman tries to save a boy from being beaten by Nazi soldiers while trying to escape from underneath a barrier wall, unfortunately the little boy falls unconscious though Spillman succeeds in pulling him to the other side. Late at night while Spillman's family is having dinner they witness the German soldiers marching into a house across the street and capturing a family, the head of the soldiers group asks the family to greet them but when the eldest man of the family, who is confined to a wheelchair does not stand and greet them as instructed the soldiers carry him and throw him off the balcony, the other family members are then brought down on the road and shot to death. The ones who are injured are killed by running their jeep over their bodies. Spillman's family gets very scared and disturbed after seeing all this, in the next scene after taking Henrik from the police custody Spillman gets to know that they'll be requiring an employment certificate to save their family from being transported to a labor camp, Spillman then asks his friend Jehuda, who in turn instructs Majurik an ex-soldier to help Spillman with the certificates, later Majurik helps Spillman's father get an employment certificate from a clothing factory. Despite having the certificate in March 1942 the family is compelled to leave their house and gets transferred to a factory warehouse along with other Jews, sadly one day the family is chosen to be sent to a concentration camp the remainder of the family is transferred to the Umschlagplatz to await transport, while Henrik and Helena are chosen and taken away by German soldiers. The next day when the family arrives at a train station Helena and Henrik also arrive there and the family reunites, 
The father takes the family's last 20 zelates to buy a piece of candy he then cuts the candy into six small pieces and shares it with each member of the family, soon the transport train arrives and all of the Jewish families are asked to board the train. While Spillman is walking towards the train with his family he's dragged from the queue by Hella who asks him to run away from there. Spillman does not understand and tries his best to be with his family but Hella suggests Spillman to run away from there as he just saved his life, with no options left Spillman reluctantly runs away while the rest of his family board the train and leave. After that he goes to meet Jehuda but unfortunately finds his family dead outside their house, later he arrives at the restaurant where he used to work earlier and gets sad after finding it empty. Suddenly when Spillman is about to return back his boss Benick calls him from his hiding place and asks him to get inside, he then stresses that they need to hide there for a few days until one of his soldier friends arrive there and rescues them. Later Benick and Spillman mix in with the 10% or so of the Jews left in the ghetto, they're given the work of knocking down the ghetto's brick walls and erecting apartment homes for the new non-Jewish occupants, while the Jews are being forced to rebuild the walls under arduous and cruel conditions, Spillman suddenly spots his old friend Janina Godluska but she quickly disappears in the crowd. In the following scene when Spillman discovers that certain Jews are plotting a revolt against Nazis he assists them in bringing weaponry into the ghetto, unfortunately one day he drops a load of bricks while carrying them and gets cruelly thrashed by a Nazi commander, he is then given a new job of distributing building supplies to the employees, there too he assists with the smuggling of weapons and potato sacks which will be handed to resistance fighters on the other side of the wall. One day Spillman is almost apprehended by a German officer who suspects him of concealing something in a sack of beans, following this near miss he chooses to flee and tries his chances in a larger city searching for Janina, with the help of Mojarek Spillman manages to get out of the labor camp and find Janina, and her husband who welcome him warmly, after providing food and clothes to Spillman Janina's husband takes him to his caretaker Gatchinsky who provides Spillman with a hiding spot for one night, the next day Gabkinski leads Spillman to a vacant apartment near the ghetto wall in which he can survive on smuggled food, however Gabkinski mentions that he must be silent because the building also contains numerous non-Jews who assume that the flat is vacant. From the apartment Spillman observes part of the Jewish ghetto rebellion of April May 1943 which he helped smuggle guns for. After a few days he again watches the revolt but unfortunately it's getting suppressed and the supporters are getting killed by Nazi soldiers. In the next scene Gabkinski arrives at the apartment and suggests Spillman run away from there as Nazi soldiers could be there any moment, Spillman however decides to stay put since he feels safe inside the apartment, Gabkinski offers him an address to go to in case of an emergency and then walks away strongly advising Spillman to not be captured alive by the Nazis. A few months pass by and Spillman is still staying in the same flat. One day he shatters a number of plates in a desperate search for food the loud sound blows his cover and he is compelled to flee the apartment. As an enraged non-Jewish woman suspects him of being Jewish, after successfully escaping from the apartment Spillman heads to the emergency address provided to him by Gabkinski, when he arrives there he unexpectedly runs into Dorata who is now married and is also pregnant. Spillman inquires about her brother and she replies that he is dead, after Dorata's husband arrives Spillman is provided with some food and then hidden in another abandoned apartment, there's also a piano in the apartment but Spillman has no permission to play it, as he has to stay silent there. In the initial days he's properly fed by his new caretaker Zalas but after a few weeks the latter becomes complacent and stops providing food, as a result Spillman suffers from jaundice and becomes incredibly weak, a few weeks later Dorata and her husband pay him a visit, and discover that he is severely ill, soon they call a doctor who performs a full body checkup of Spillman, and suggests he take a rest. In the next scene Spillman regains his power in time to see the wider 1944 Warsaw Revolt in which the Polish people attempt to reclaim control of their city, soon after the Germans stormed the building forcing him to leave, the Poles had hoped that the oncoming Soviet Red Army would assist them but sadly the Russians did not arrive, allowing the Germans to put down the uprising and expel the entire population of Warsaw. Spillman takes refuge at an abandoned hospital across the street from his last hiding, later he exits the hospital and jumps back over the wall into the ghetto which is now an abandoned lonely wasteland of bricks and debris since the Germans have chosen to burn Warsaw to ashes. Spillman hides there searching among burned out buildings for food and, 
continues to shelter until he's discovered one night by a Nazi officer named Captain Wilm Hossenfeld. Scared Spillman asks to be spared as he is a professional pianist when the captain asks him to prove it. Spillman plays a beautiful song on the piano for the first time in years. Hosenfeld is impressed by Spillman's performance and he assists him in hiding in the attic. He even supplies Spillman with regular food in an attempt to keep him alive. When the Russian army finally approaches Warsaw Hosenfeld and his employees are forced to flee the residence, Spillman receives a final delivery of supplies from Hosenfeld as well as his overcoat. He inquires about Spillman's surname which resembles Spillman the German word for a pianist. Hosenfeld says he'll keep an ear out for Spillman on the radio. Before leaving he also informs Spillman that he only has to live in fear for a few more days as the Red Army will soon conquer Warsaw. After a few days Spillman spots Polish partisans and walks outside in pleasure to greet his comrades, they mistakenly believe he's a German after seeing his coat which Hosenfeld gave him and attempt to shoot him. Luckily after he surrenders and comes forward, the officers recognize him as a Polish citizen and stop the firing. The scene then fast forward some months where Hosenfeld is one of the detainees in an impoverished Russian POW camp, nearby a group of Polish Jews have just been liberated and when Hosenfeld learns that one of them is a musician he walks to the fence and tells him that he assisted Spillman, he then asks him to persuade Spillman to repay the favor before a Russian soldier puts him back down on the ground. After a few days the Polish musician brings Spillman to the place where Hosenfeld had been kept, Sadly when they arrive the whole camp has been relocated without any trace. Unable to help his friend Spillman, returns to the radio station to play the piano. In the last part of the movie it is shown that Hosenfeld perished in a Soviet prison in 1952 and Spillman lived for 88 years before he died in Poland in 2000. The movie ends with Vladislav Spillman joyously performing Chopin's Polonaise Brillante in concert with a full orchestra. That was all from the video I hope you liked it, subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out, thank you.